to talk about supply chain design. How can we design a supply chain that's appropriate for your product? Let's take a motivating example. Barilla is a pasta manufacturer. Pasta is a product with relatively stable customer demand with a low demand uncertainty. Which supply design would you use to sell pasta? Through online channel or retail stores, and why? How about gourmet truffle sea salt? Would you sell it through online channel or retail stores, and why? We need to design our supply chains to support the competitive priorities of our products and services. Two types of designs are used, efficient supply chains and responsive supply chains. What do we mean by efficient supply chains? They focus on low cost, a consistent quality, and on-time delivery. An example of an efficient supply chain is a push system with traditional retail stores. So in a push system, we are trying to reduce the cost. Why? Think about how this is run. They build inventory before they receive orders. That means they produce products in large quantities so they can use economies of scale and their per unit production cost is low. Also, let's think about the transportation cost. Customers pick up products at retail stores, so there's no cost of transportation between retailers and customers. When retailers place orders with wholesalers, uh, the wholesaler makes a delivery using a slow mode of transportation, such as trucks. They don't use package carriers such as UPS or USPS. They can do this because the retailer already has inventory and there's no need to rush. So the cost of transportation between these two is low. Overall, the cost of transportation is low. Let's think about the cost of holding inventory. It can be high because they are holding inventory. But in many cases, it's less than the savings we have from the transportation cost and the production cost. Next, what do we mean by responsive supply chains? They focus on product variety, customization, fast delivery times, frequent development of new products and services, volume flexibility, and top quality. So we are more concerned about the quality rather than the cost. Examples of responsive supply chains are assemble to order and make to order systems. So they are pool systems. Let's notice that there is a trade-off between responsiveness and cost efficiency. In this graph, the x-axis is responsiveness, low to high, and the y-axis is the cost, high to low. Now, if you want to make your uh, supply chain more responsive, the cost will be higher. So more responsive, the cost gets higher. So for example, if you want to make your product more uh, if you want to offer a greater variety of products, the cost goes up. And if you want to let people customize your orders, then the cost goes up. If you want to provide fast deliveries, the cost goes up. If you want to develop new products or services more frequently, the cost goes up. If you want to offer volume flexibility, so you want to sell your products in high volume, low volume, or anything in between, then the cost goes up. And if you want to offer top quality products, the cost goes up. So there is a trade-off between responsiveness and cost efficiency. So what strategy should they use? It depends on the type of demand we are facing. Are you selling a product whose demand is highly pro uh, predictable? Then you can use the efficient supply chains. Are you selling a product whose demand is unpredictable? Then responsive supply chains are a better choice. So let's go back to our previous question and try to answer this. Barilla is a pasta manufacturer. Pasta is a product with relatively stable customer demand with a low demand uncertainty. 
which supply chain design would you use to sell pasta through online channel or retail stores? So let's think about demand uncertainty. Is pasta a fast moving product with stable demand or is it a slow moving product with unpredictable demand? It's a fast moving product with stable demand. So uh, an efficient supply chain is more appropriate. And a retail store is an example of an efficient supply chain. Next, how about gourmet truffle sea salt? Would you sell it through online channel or retail stores? Let's think about a demand uncertainty. Is gourmet truffle or sea salt a fast moving product with stable demand or is it a slow moving product with unpredictable demand? It's a slow moving product with unpredictable demand. So a responsive supply chain is a better choice. An online channel is an example of a responsive supply chain. So let's try some examples. The competitive strategy of Make Master Car is to provide a large variety of MRO products delivered within 24 hours. So, um, so they wanna offer product variety and fast delivery. It carries a, a large variety of products and keeps high inventory of each product. Which one is the appropriate supply chain for this company? So, uh, responsive supply chain. Next, a blank supply chain is appropriate for an integrated steel mill that measures lead times in months and requires large orders. So lead times in months, that's a slow delivery, and large orders, that means they want to produce their products in large quantities so that they can reduce the production cost. So they are concerned about the cost. So they need to use an efficient supply chain. And a blank supply chain is appropriate for a steel service center that provides, uh, that promises 24 hour lead time, short lead time, and sells orders of any size, volume, flexibility. So they are targeting for a responsive supply chain.